Our guest co-host today, I should say, for today's show, futurist, entrepreneur and gamer with over two decades of venture capitalist and startup experience behind him. CEO of the leading global media company focused on the metaverse, gaming and crypto. What are we going to talk about, I wonder, eh? <laughs> it's Paul the Prophet Dawalibi who joins us now here. Paul, great to have you with us. Tom, thank you so much for having me. Absolute pleasure to have you on the sofa as well. Listen, we're going to dive into all of those elements in just a few moments' time, but from your intro, from our intro, a lot of people out there will be going, the profit, okay, explain. Look, I, I just wanna say first though, that I'm most excited about you singing at the end of the show, because I figure <laughs> that is what's coming, right? <laughs> we'll all sing along, don't you worry about that, yeah. Uh, look, it's a double entendre. I, I used to host a very big podcast, and I would talk about the future a lot. Yeah. My well, whole brand is about yeah. the future. Yeah, yeah. And these prophecies would tend to come true. And so people started calling me a prophet, and realizing that if you listen to my prophecies, you could actually make a lot of money. And so I adopted this brand of the prophet with an F and it's stuck and more people know me now as the prophet than as Paul. The prof, Professor, Pro Professor Prophet alongside That's us it. here. Listen, let's get on to the matter at hand. Uh, we want to talk gaming, we want to talk metaverse, we want to talk all the different industries that you diversify across. Give me one that sort of wraps it all up because I often talk about, you know, gaming and the UAE, Dubai, the UA, this region of the world becoming a real hub for gaming at yep. the moment. All good and well, that's brilliant. Let's bring as many gamers as we can. Yep. But how does that benefit other industries? Great question. And I think people massively underestimate how important gaming is as an industry. And just to give you a sense, fun is my brand. Mm. So we talk about gaming, we talk about metaverse, but the umbrella really is fun. Yeah. And you've probably had people on the show, you've probably heard people talk about AI. Right? AI is the boogeyman right now. Hmm. It's going to take all our jobs. It's going to replace everything we do at work. And we don't mention AI here. But <laughs> there will be an AI, I, Tom, at some point. In his, in <laughs> but if you believe that, if you buy that, what does that mean? It means the amount we work in a day is decreasing. And if you look over history, humans today work far less than humans 20,000 years ago. Yeah. Work is on the decline because we have robots and machines and AI now doing things for us. What does that mean? What is the growing piece of the pie? It's entertainment, it's recreation, it's fun. And so my whole thing is about betting on this growing piece of the pie, which is fun. And the biggest part of that fun pie is gaming. Mm. Gaming is bigger than the music industry, the movie industry, the TV industry combined. More people watch gaming than they watch ESPN and Hulu and Netflix combined. We're talking about a massive, massive industry. And this is why places like the UAE are very bullish, want to create high quality gaming jobs, want to attract gaming companies here. The opportunity is massive. We're talking about an industry that will be worth trillions, not billions. You talk about opportunities though, and not to be a pessimist, guys, my glass is usually half full. Uh, but what about challenges then, and particularly in the MENA region within the gaming industry? Yeah. It's hard to speak broadly about MENA because each piece of the region has its own challenges, right? The UAE, very good at attracting talent. You can very easily get smart people to move here. It's a beautiful place to live. And so getting talent here is relatively easy. That's a bit more difficult if you're in Saudi Arabia, who's also very bullish on gaming, investing billions to build a gaming industry there. But the biggest challenge I would say is really getting long-term conviction from governments around investing in the industry. Mm. Because it's easy to jump on the latest hype thing, right? Today it's AI, yesterday it was crypto, before that it was something else. NFT. NFTs, Say NFTs. right? Yeah. There's always some fad. Mm. But if you want to build a sustainable industry for the long term, what you really need is governments that have long term conviction mm. and are willing to invest, are willing to take the time to understand what they're actually trying to build and not just jumping on a fence. And that's seemingly, that's happening right here in the UAE. Absolutely, yeah. at, the, at the highest levels. Mm. There's not just interest, there's dollars, there's resources. Every emirate in some ways has a gaming initiative. You have AD Gaming in Abu Dhabi, you have the Dubai Program for Gaming, the committee of which I sit on. Uh, you have free zones that are doing things in gaming, like DMCC has a gaming center, DIFC has a metaverse incubator. So, Everyone is trying to do something. And maybe the, the last challenge I would talk about is getting everyone on the same page. Yeah. The problem is there's so much opportunity. Everyone's trying to go after something. How do you get everyone rowing in the same direction? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Paul, you know, 
I'm going to be very honest here. Yeah. Everything that you're saying to me is super brand new. <laughs> um, so, and I feel like people at home might be sharing the same sentiment, right? The way I see gaming is is quite interesting because I, th I thought it is quite an isolated industry. But the way we were just speaking about it is how it merges into and, and can fulfill so many other goals and objectives across many industries. Yep. Now, you spoke about that kind of growing piece of the pie. Let's speak about specific industries that gaming is actually contributing to. Yep. Education, healthcare, the gamification process, uh, the virtual experiences. How how has it really meshed in with other industries? Great question. And this is, this is how gaming becomes a, an industry worth tens of trillions. It's not just playing Fortnite or playing Minecraft or playing Roblox. It's how do you gamify everything? Because mm. fun is a very powerful behavioral change agent. In other words, if you can make something fun, you can get people to do it. Mm -hmm. And so if we can make education more fun, students will learn better. Mm. There's been studies that have proven this. If you can make working out more fun, obesity rates go down. You can get kids to work out more. Maybe they do a VR game and they're working out and they don't even realize it. Mm. And so anything that can be made more fun, retail, travel, tourism, education, healthcare, you name transportation. Mm -hmm. You guys were talking about Jitex traffic. Imagine if there was a way where in the RTA app, right? It gives you a quest that says, take this other road and we'll give you five dirhams in your parking account mm. to try and reduce traffic, but you turn it into a game. Mm -hmm. I Clever. think everything can be gamified. Mm. Yeah. Even th boring things like banking should be gamified. Everything can be made more fun. Um, uh, 30 seconds, uh, Jitex just around the corner. What should gamers be looking forward to this year? Yeah, I think gaming is in taking on an increasingly large role in Jitex. Yep. So this year, Future Blockchain Summit, on the 13th of October, it's gonna be a dedicated gaming stage, gaming day. It's all gaming speakers, some Web3 gaming, like crypto gaming, but all gaming. So it's a big part of Future Blockchain Summit, which is at Jitex. Yeah. Um, but I think people can expect to see new technologies, AI and gaming coming together, mm -hmm. which I think we'll start seeing in a much bigger way for, for the first time, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I just think more foreign gaming companies yeah. coming participating at Jitex mm. that maybe they haven't in the past. Yeah, I love that. Even listening to Paul is fun. Yep. So thank you, Paul. You're going to be sticking around and helping us throughout this episode. Uh, but after this, we are discussing a digital marketplace where users trade expertise with a time currency. So stick around to hear from the co-founder of Hexatime up next.